Hello there and welcome to your first lecture on uh, the brain. We talked about how psychology is the study of observable behaviors and also the biological basis behind them. So our next unit is really looking at a little bit more of the, the structures of the brain and the structures of our body and what role they play in our behavior. Okay, so I want you guys to be thinking as we go through these different biological structures, what role this may play in behavior, things we can observe. So first we're going to talk about the basic breakdown of the nervous system. Um, a little bit of a review, but our nervous system is made of two different parts. All right, so the nervous system branches out, and I recommend that you just write down this branching tree. The nervous system is made of the peripheral nervous system, which we call the PNS in short, so the peripheral meaning the outside, and the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is just consists of the two things, the brain and the spinal cord. And that's it for the CNS. And we'll have a couple lectures on different structures of the brains that you'll be responsible for knowing. But the brain and then the spinal cord. So you can see right here. So the spinal cord is the long um, bunch of nerves and neurons that runs down your spine. It's protected by your um, spine. And then the peripheral nervous system is everything that's not in the central nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system you think is outside, like your peripheral vision, outside of the brain and the spinal cord. So the peripheral nervous system is then di or broken up into two more branches. So you have the autonomic peripheral nervous system and then you have the somatic peripheral nervous system. So the autonomic and somatic. And I want you to think of this word autonomic and the root there auto meaning that it's self. So auto meaning self by itself. So autonomic uh, nervous system controls self-regulated actions and organs and glands versus your somatic is your voluntary movement. Think about things in your body that you do not have control over. That would fall under your autonomic, your heartbeat, your digestion of food um, versus somatic is the things that you have control over like your muscle movements, moving your arm. Some things fall under both so you can think of blinking your eyes. Without thinking about it your eyes naturally blink but you're also able to voluntarily blink as well so I can blink a couple times or I can make myself not blink. Alright, we're really going to focus here with the brain structures on the autonomic, the self-regulated actions of organs and glands. And those two are branched into two different uh, categories. So the sympathetic, think of that as your arousing, and then the parasympathetic, and that's your calming. So you have things within your body that are arousing, which means wake you up, excite you, and then things that are the opposite of that, that calm you down. And these are actually connected in feedback loops. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our somatic versus autonomic nervous system. Again, this is all under the peripheral, the CNS. We'll have a completely separate lecture on the CNS or the central nervous system. So voluntary versus involuntary. Your somatic, somatic nervous system is your voluntary and your autonomic is your involuntary. All right, so your sympathetic, uh, remember we talked about that's going to be your arousal. That's in charge of things like fight or flight. You've already heard that expression before, but anytime you are put in a situation that's stressful or that might be um, uh, against your, or what I want to say, uh, for survival, uh, you have to run, you hear a loud noise, you see something scary, your brain kind of takes over in this fight or flight situation and it does a couple things without you even knowing it. First of all, it speeds up your heart rate and think about what your heart does. Your heart gives blood. Blood has all those, it has oxygen in it, it has glucose in it, because you need to get your, um, your blood circulating if you have to suddenly run, um, or you need oxygen in your muscles if you need to quickly move. So speeding up heart rate, increasing my supply of oxygen, and then my blood pressure, and then it constricts some arteries and relaxes other, meaning that some parts of your body get really tense and other parts relax. All right, so you might have heard that blood is redirected from your stomach so you stop digesting food because you want to move your, your blood flow other places. So those would restrict. So blood vessels to your stomach would constrict because you don't need to be digesting food if you see something that's about to attack you. And other places relax, meaning that it allows more blood to flow in that area. Your parasympathetic, so that's the part that's going to, the sympathetic, that's the part that's going to excite your body. 
Your parasympathetic is in control of the opposite. So once you are in that really anxious stage, now your parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for calming you back down. How are we going to conserve energy? How am I going to recover after I have ran 26 miles? So your parasympathetic is in charge of calming you down, reducing all those things that opposite. So reducing your heart rate, reducing blood flow and blood pressure, and re returning your body to a normal state. So parasympathetic is the, like think of like a paramedic as the person who kind of calms you down, brings you back to normal. Here are some, pause this, write down some examples because you need to know some examples of some things that are arousing in the sympathetic and versus calming. So let's just look at a few, let's look at your pupils. So if I was um, all of a sudden in a situation that was very scary, I want more light going into my eyes so that I have the most uh, area of the visual um, field. So I dilate my pupil, more light coming to my eyes. That's an arousal uh, reaction. My parasympathetic would then be in charge of contracting the pupil, so bringing it back to normal. We talked about our stomach, stopping digestion versus stimulating digestion. Um, another one that might be good is uh, your heart. So you're, you're increasing your heart rate, decreasing your heart rate. Your liver, I want more glucose. Remember from biology that glucose is sugar, it's energy. Our body breaks it down. So I would want to uh, increase the amount of glucose if I need to exert a lot of energy. And then when I'm back to that resting stage, I would want to stimulate the gallbladder uh, to take that out. All right. So. Take some notes on what would be arousing versus calming. Your central nervous system then. We're gonna talk about, like I said, our brain in depth and the parts of the brains that you'll need to know. But the other parts, the neural networks and our reflexes, we need to know our reflexes because these are associated with other parts of our body as well. Some simple reflex. So we have a couple more slides here and I want you to kind of stop it make some notes to the side, and look at what is actually happening with a reflex. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at a, a reflex of your finger. So I want you to think of your finger and then actually like imagine it over a flame somewhere. Now, what would sense the flame getting hotter or like you're about to burn yourself are your skin receptors. So look at the red here. So the, my red skin receptor, that is gonna go back so I have something in my skin that senses heat. That means it's not good. That goes through here, these are all of my nerves, back into my spinal cord, and my spinal cord goes all the way up to my brain. All right, my brain then says, uh, sends a message that says, that's hot, you're gonna burn yourself, take your finger away from the flame. And that's the blue here. So the message comes back in the blue to your muscle to pull your, your finger away. So a simple reflex, pause it and then listen to it again. A simple reflex where my hand is just re, uh, coming away. I have information from my skin carried up to my brain with the red arrow. Then it goes to my interneuron so between the two. So an interneuron we'll talk about later, but it's the one that basically connects intra in between my sensory and my motor and then it says my motor, my muscles to pull it away. All right, so that's a simple reflex. So here's my, my sensory neuron, my incoming, I sense things. My motor's my outgoing, the thing that's going to make it move. So because this reflex involves only the spinal cord, my hand jerks away, um, it's considered, uh, we talk about reflexes when we talk about the spinal cord. Okay, so it says, read it down here. So it says, because this reflex involves only the spinal cord, the hand jerks away from the flame even more for the information of the event has reached the brain, causing the experience of pain. So there are some things in our body that we want to be these simple reflexes where we don't even think about them. My brain is not even registering pain before my hand pulls it away. Right? We're not in charge of these simple reflexes. They're something that just happen naturally. And because they are not involving our brain and the cognition or the thought process, they run through our spinal cord. It's considered a simple reflex. We're going to talk about our brain structures and spinal cord more in our next notes.